Um, so my name is um, Armin Moog. Um, I'm a partner at uh, Gillespie's. We are landscape architects, uh, landscape planners, master planners. Um, I work in the London studio of, of Gillespie's. And um, today I wanted to sort of give you, give you an insight on uh, a project that We've been working on for for quite a number of years now, uh, which is Elephant Park in the, in Elephant Castle, which is in the south of London, south of the river. Um, a project that is um, led uh, by Lenleys as a client and, and developer. Um, it's a new new residential neighbourhood uh, in in central London, uh, quite large, um, dense sort of mixed use residential led. There's about sort of three thousand homes eventually that will be sort of delivered as part of this of this scheme um, and it it, um, it came about as a, as a joint venture between the local council uh, Southwark and, and then Lisa as the, the development sort of partner for this for this site and we we came on board um, about sort of eight eight years ago now um, as, as landscape architect um, to look after the, the site-wide public run uh, master plan. Uh, the, the original master plan is by Make Architect, um, and we, we took on the, the, the public realm to develop uh, what we call a landscape framework for the entire site um, to look at how we would design and deliver and phase this, uh, this landscape over about sort of 10, 15 years, uh, which is the, the life of, uh, of this project. Um, which for us as, as landscape architects is, is a really interesting uh, uh, project and approach um, with, with sometimes uh, the, this, uh, the, the glue to, to this, these master plans, uh, the sort of longer sort of you know, consultants on, on board on, on a project like this where this master plan is devised and then a number of architects sort of come to look at different phases of this, uh, of this plan. And, what was interesting about this approach um, very early on, the, the approach that Lenley's um, took was really look at the, the, the public realm and the landscape um, as, a, as a leading, uh, leading the, the making of this project. Um, and very early on, uh, the, the intent was to implement the public realm, implement the streetscape um, ahead of plots, ahead of some of the buildings. The whole idea was to really sort of um, reopen this site to to its existing context, its existing uh, neighborhood. Um, it, it, it used to be a site that was fairly sort of closed off, um, not 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 sort of responding to the grain that existed around the uh, this part of Southwark. Um, and and the strength of this master plan was really to sort of reopen uh, the the site, make people move through the site very early on before before any of the buildings were actually sort of um, started. So we, we're about sort of um, seven ages um, down the line on, on the project. There's, there's probably another sort of four or five years um, of, of landscape and power plan to be implemented. Um, and the, this, is, this is an image of, of about sort of last year of what's been built um, of, for, of the scheme. And you can see already a lot of the public realm, a lot of the, the central park, which is the feature of this master plan having been uh, built. And this is really sort of um, what we feel is, is the strength of these master plans, this, and, and which is, again, an approach that, that we think is, is, is a very good model for, for future sort of master plans, urban master plans. This is very central in London, very dense, um, but there's a, there's a great uh, array of, of uh, public realm offer uh, placemaking within this, this master plan, which, knits the plan into its, uh, into its context. So the, the landscape framework that, that we, we produced is anchored around this idea of the central park. Um, there's two acres of, of new green open space uh, being delivered, which is fairly unique in, 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 a, in a place as central as that in, in London being in, in zone one. And from, from this master plan, from this, the heart of this, this master plan, there are an array of other, other spaces, other places that are being sort of um, offered and, and complement the, the heart of the master plan. So we've got a series of play playscapes um, very integrated into, into the, the landscape and the public realm that dot 
the, the master plan in, in different parts and culminate into the main sort of play space at the center of the park, which is Elephant Spring, um, which only opened uh, a, a few months ago. And I'll, and I'll come back to some of that, as well as the park, as well as this sort of playable landscape that we have. There's a, there are a series of streetscape, new streets that are sort of reconnecting the site, that are bringing people, moving people, bringing more connectivity in connectivity into this uh, into this master plan as well as a, a number of squares that are sort of quite um, key to to knitting this neighborhood this new neighborhood into its existing context and and those squares are sort of located on the on the edges of the site almost announcing this sort of uh, the old and the new meeting in in these uh, celebrations of, of open space and, and bringing those different communities, uh, back together. So, as I said, we we we, we developed that, that landscape framework. This this was the sort of the, the the starting point of the of the master plan. We've we've implemented about sort of seventy percent of, of that now after sort of seven eight years, and we we learned a lot uh, on the way of of this project. And and we we I just wanted to sort of pick up on three points, um, which we think are. are important sort of point about an approach um, that we could take that, that might help us to sort of create uh, better better cities, uh, create, you know, work towards a more resilient uh, future and, it's, and, and really sort of anchor this approach around the importance of, of uh, green space, the importance of nature and bringing nature back into uh, our cities, but also looking at nature and, and, and landscape sort of leading some of these, uh, these approaches. In, in dense urban cities. So the first, the first point that, that we took from, from this project and which we feel is, is a really important approach to this large scale master plan is, is the sense of the idea of creating partnership and engaging really early on um, with, with the local communities that, that are in, in the area, but also sort of bringing together councils, developers and communities. And um, again, the, the, because this is a project that um, originated between a local authority and a developer, Southwark and Manly's. Um, quite a number of, of uh, initiatives were, were put in very early on in the, in the project. And there, there was a real sort of consultation sort of program that was very sort of meaningful uh, in engaging uh, local communities. And it, it culminated into the idea, especially for the Central Park, to create what is called a park advisory group which is a fairly unique model um, that, that we've seen here where representative from the council, representative from uh, the client and representative from the community were sort of brought together. We had about sort of two or three uh, representative from each, uh, each group brought together and we were the designers sort of uh, workshopping with them the park and, and the, the idea of implementing the park in phases hearing the ideas, um, sort of workshopping the ideas with them, bringing them back to the table, and really sort of having an initiative uh, process um, to make sure that the park that we were creating was actually responding to the needs and the ideas of, of, of those, those different sort of representatives uh, within the group. And it, it really created a place that was straight away sort of very well uh, adopted, very well sort of used by, by all, all these um, different communities and, 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 the, and the council. And the work, the work that we did um, was looking at the, the, the central space is, is phased, the central park is phased into three sort of chunks of, of, of construction. And we very early on opened one phase, phase one, which was open uh, in 2017, ahead of any of the, of the plots around. And that phase was heavily sort of influenced by this uh, park advisory group, um, and we we developed uh, this idea of um, temporary play space using the hoarding, the construction hoarding around the park that was developed uh, with, with this group, and also sort of the idea of a community, a public pavilion that would actually sit in the park, um, and and the whole brief, the whole agenda for these these spaces were, were, was driven by this um, park advisory group. So very, very important to sort of really sort of get the project um, started. The other, the other approach that um, has been uh, key to, the, to this project has been uh, taking this, it's what we call this landscape-led approach uh, to create places and spaces that are sort of 
you know, for, for people that are sort of there early on and stay in, in the memory of, of people, they, they sort of bring you back into the site. Um, one of the key uh, approach here was to, the, the site itself had a, a large number of existing trees um, and, and the master plan went through several iterations of, um, of, the, of the build form and, and, the, and the public run to make sure that as many existing trees could be retained uh, as possible. And this is um, just an image of, of the, the construction of the, the site starting from the, from the south, from the bottom left corner. And you can see the number of existing trees being kept, the, the main group of existing trees being part of the, the main park in the, in the center of the, of the space here. And that straight away sort of um, was a key starting point in influencing the build form, influencing the streetscape, that each of the existing trees have different levels that influence the topography, influence the plots around them, um, and, and really sort of draw the design uh, of, of, the, of the public run and the, and the central park. So you can see that this is an image of, again, the phase one being built to the right uh, of the screen. And the main part of the site uh, still being uh, you know, a plot, sort of series of plots behind, behind fence, behind hoarding. But very early on, uh, the first third of the park, the first phase of the park is being built, uh, which you can see there on the bottom left. And that, that was really a sort of a, a really important message um, to the local community and an important message to the, to the council in making sure that you know, the, the, the construction was starting and uh, meaningful sort of public space was actually sort of being created um, to bring people into a space, make people move through a space, which didn't happen for, for a number of years, and really start to create destinations, uh, anchors for people to, to go to, remember them, and start to sort of you know, put this, this project on the map um, within, within London. So the, the, the space itself was, was fairly simple, but it was behind this, this hoarding, you know, no, no plots behind being built, uh, capturing again a number of existing trees, and then Lenly is sort of creating a really interesting program of event uh, and activation of that space, uh, which was key to sort of draw people into the space. And that uh, activity, that event sort of program was also um, came about really in, in discussion with local communities. There's a, there are very strong sort of uh, groups of communities around, around the area, a very interesting mix of different cultures. And, and this program of, act, of, of uh, activating the park was built with these, these communities in mind um, through music, through arts, through, through um, local sort of school events. And that really sort of, you know, in, in the space of, of a few months, really created a, a memorable uh, place, uh, a base sort of a temporary uh, space, but it drew people into the site and, and everyone started to realize something is happening in this place. You know, forget the buildings that are sort of being built around. There's actually sort of a really meaningful space being being offered um, to the public. And the last last point, really, that again we, we've really sort of learned um, through the project and, and learned on, on the number of master plans that we're involved in is is looking at the the adaptability of, of what we create. The the, the public when we we always see the public really as a as a canvas um, where we, we're trying to sort of foresee some of the use, some of the the movement through the place, but a lot of that canvas will come to life um, once the activities, once the sort of the ground floor of the buildings actually start to, uh, to be populated. But a few things we learned on this project was um, the, the, the plan of the, the central park itself went through several iterations in the sort of the, 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 the sort of eight, seven ages that we've been on, on the project. Um, the, the, the park started as this image on the, on the screen. And the original intent was taking a slightly sort of more formal approach to the space, uh, sort of looking at it more as a sort of a London, London Square, London Square Garden. Um, you've got sort of streets on the, on the, on the perimeter of the park uh, with sort of servicing the different plots around the, around the central park. Um, and the work we did through different teams uh, at Lenley's was to really sort of turn this model around and move the cars, move the vehicles away from really the heart of the space. So a lot of work was done through you know, with the client, but also the engineering group of keeping the vehicles on the outer perimeter of the site, bringing uh, servicing and, and, and vehicle access to the plots, uh, keeping that on plot 
from the main streetscape and really kind of pushing the park right up to the edges of these spaces. So there's a sense of the, the building actually sitting in the park. Um, it's a fully sort of pedestrian, cyclist uh, friendly uh, environment and really starting to relax the entire language of the, of the landscape into something far more natural, uh, far more inviting, um, creating sort of smaller spaces, smaller sort of pockets of, uh, of space. And that, that has been sort of uh, implemented again in phases. Um, we recently just opened phase two of the park in the last few months, and we're starting to really sort of see again um, how, how these spaces are being used, little pockets of space. It's, it's an invitation into, into this, this sort of captured nature, um, but it's, it's really sort of a push in, in greening, <coughs> greening the environment as much as possible, where previously and, you know, an approach would have been to keep far more sort of hardscape and hard spaces. There's a real push uh, on, on, on everything we see at the moment to sort of green those spaces as much as possible and really start with the, 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 the soft landscape and then start to then carve the movement through the through the, the soft landscape. Um, and you can see on the on the left image here is, is uh, phase three. <clears throat> These are the new plots that are being built uh, fronting the park on the on the north side. You will have sort of retail, restaurants and cafes opening here. And again, you see the landscape sort of has been built and will mature for a number of years before the activity actually starts to spill out into these into these spaces. Um, another another. Sorry, I, I have to ask you to come to the come to a conclusion soon. Yep, <laughs> sure. I'll go. I'll go quickly through this. Um, just a very important point about again uh, resilient landscape and resilient sort of looking at the the the, the challenge of climate change. Uh, rainwater management. Um, we, we, the, whole, the entire space of the park is, is built around rain gardens that we've got on the perimeter of the space. It captures all the rainfall um, that comes from the streets into, the, into this uh, great sort of gravel trench um, all around the park and create a very unique uh, typology of, of plants, uh, plant communities around the space, um, creating a sort of a playscape as well. We've introduced sort of pathways and little bridges through it to really sort of bring those messages out to people visiting the space, children, families, um, and as well as those sort of wetter sort of areas of the park, we've got also really sort of very sunny sort of pockets of space, which come, which take a very different language. And, and we've really sort of looked at the, the whole mapping of the uh, sun shade through the space, looking at how we create plant communities that are actually responding to those, uh, those microclimates. Again, being very mindful of the use of water and the use of plants that are actually sort of for, the, for, these, uh, for these particular microclimates. And I'll just leave you with images of, of Elephant Spring, which is the main play space at the heart of the space, um, opened uh, a few months ago. Um, and again, was a, a really important addition to the, to the park in, in drawing people again to the space. It's capturing a really wide audience, not just of this side, but a very wide sort of community around the, around the place. A real, a real success. Thanks, a lot, Arnold. I mean, that, that area really has transformed and I absolutely love the idea of using the hoarding as kind of temporary play space because often the transition from an old place to a new place is, can be quite um, disruptive. So I think that's, that's a brilliant idea.